All right, let's go ahead and get started tonight. And um, we'll go ahead and open with a word of prayer tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us out here tonight. We just pray that you would bless uh, this, this time tonight, Lord, as we remember Inez and as we remember uh, what you did in her life, Lord, and your faithfulness to her, Lord, and uh, your blessings on her. And I just pray that you would uh, just bless us here tonight, Lord, as we remember these things. And uh, we ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're going to start with a couple of hymns. And um, I was trying to remember what Inez's favorite hymns were. And I, I know she liked How Great Thou Art. And I know she liked it as well with my soul. Those are the ones that I remembered. So um, I assume maybe Great is Thy Faithfulness too. So, so let's go ahead and number 37 first. How Great Thou Art. God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great the word, how great the word. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great the word, how great the word. And when I think that God is Son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great the word, how great the word. When Christ shall come. His shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart 
then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior oh God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art all right and then let's turn to number 40 great is thy faithfulness Psalm 116. You can turn over there if you want. Psalm 116. I 
I don't know what Inez's favorite psalm was, um, so I had to just take a stab at one of them, right? But uh, Psalm 116 is great. It talks about uh, something that David learned when he had a near-death experience about dying and going to be with the Lord. So Psalm 116, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me. The pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thine handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Well, what I want to do, I put together a slideshow of all the pictures I could find of Inez. She was not one that wanted her picture taken a lot, I don't think, because I didn't find her in a, all of our church events and stuff looking over the past. It was hard to find pictures of her. Uh, but one of the things I had, I had a, I guess I could say yeah, it was a fun time going back over and, and looking at some of the stuff from her past, stuff that I never really knew that much about. And um, so I'll kind of run through this for you. So first of all, Inez was born in uh, Rathbun, I uh, Iowa, in August 16th, 1924. And uh, that would be kind of in the southern part of Iowa, and uh, right as you're getting toward the top of Missouri. Uh, small town area. In her early years, she played sandlot baseball with her brothers, um, and she listened to the Chicago Cubs games on the radio. Now, that kind of fascinated me because I, I, I remember this old story that I heard. Uh, Ronald Reagan, before he was president in his young years, was a radio announcer, a sports announcer for the Chicago Cubs in WHO out of Des Moines, Iowa, the radio station. And he was a announcer from 1934 to 1937, so she probably listened to him on the radio broadcasting the Cubs games, which is fascinating. And um, yeah, he had a great story of one of the times they would they would get the they would get the um, information from the game by Morse code over wire, and they would tell him what play was coming up, and then they would just have to elaborate on that and make it sound good. They weren't watching the game, right? And so one time. They, they, the wire stopped, and they, it was right at the point where guys up to bat it was in the ninth inning, and Reagan didn't know what to do, so he just started making the guy foul off pitches. And he, that went on for like 10 or 15 minutes until they finally got the wire through, and he could finish the game. And so, so she may have listened to that. I don't know. Um, when she went to school, she attended grade school and high school in Seymour, Iowa, which is, I guess, the bigger town close by Rathbun. And um, she played on the girls' basketball team and the girls' softball teams. Um, when she went to college, she, um, okay, this is some of the pictures of her. There she is. I put arrows pointing to her if it's more than one so you know which one is her. Um, but she attended grade school and high school in Seymour, Iowa. She, yeah, she played on the girls' teams there. She went to college 
and uh, she attended the American Institute of Commerce in Davenport, Iowa. And it looks like it was a two-year degree, I think, that she got there. So business school, basically, she went to. Um, in 1943, she graduated with a business degree, and then she went off to the Navy. 1943 was in the middle of World War II. And so she went off and joined the Navy, the, what they called the Waves, back in those days. And that was from 1944 to 1946. And uh, she went up to, she was stationed in San Francisco at Hunters Point Naval Shipyard, and she was the secretary to the legal officer there. And that's what she did during the war. And she was a yeoman second class. That was her final rank that she had. So in 1946, um, well, let me go back, talk a little bit about this first. Okay. So in 1943, they started a women's baseball league. And um, there was the movie, A League of, Her Own that, League of Their Own, that was um, popular back in the, was it late 90s or something. And um, so it was all about that. And so this was something that started in 1943. Um, the thought was that there were a lot of players, especially in the minor leagues, in men's baseball, that were going off to the war. And some of the famous players in the major leagues went off to the war. Some of the greatest stars. Um, Ted Williams and um, um, Joe DiMaggio and some of those guys went off to the war. And um, so the thought was, we're going to lose baseball. Now, they never stopped the major leagues, but they were concerned about some of the minor league cities. And so they decided, I guess it was Wrigley from Wrigley Field and um, Wrigley's Chewing Gum, that decided to start a women's league and to try to make some money that they were losing in the minor league games. And so... Inez heard about that in 1946. Um, I think her time in the Navy was just getting done. She's probably in for two years. And then she heard about the tryouts, and they were in L.A., and so she went down to L.A. to try out. And so she made it, and she made it on the South Bend Blue Sox. And there she is right there yep. in 1946. So um, this is her in her Blue Sox uniform. Uh, so after the tryout, she attended spring training in Mississippi and then was assigned to the Blue Sox for the 1946 season. Um, she played first base, and her nickname was Lefty, okay, because you, you can see it right here, Lefty voice. Yep. And um, after a year there in 1946, she got traded to the Grand Rapids Chicks. That's their stadium there. And she was to spend the next seven years playing baseball with them. And so she, her total career was eight years. And so she spent the rest of the time with the Grand Rapids Chicks. Um, there she is there. So she led them every year they went to the playoffs. Okay, so good team. There she is there. Um, let's see. 1947, which I didn't, couldn't find a, a pitcher that I knew was from 1947. That year they didn't have a pitcher. Or no, what it was, they had a team pitcher, but she didn't make it into the pitcher for some reason. She was on the team. Maybe she, when she got traded, they had already taken the pitcher or something. I, I don't know what the story is behind that. But in 1947, they won the championship. And uh, then in 1948, there's a 48 pitcher. They w had the league's best record. They didn't win the championship, but they did have the best record in the league. They went 77 and 47. Pretty good. 1949, 1950, 1952, 1951. Pitchers lost, I guess. You can't find it on the internet anywhere. But uh, 1953, they won another championship. So twice their, their version of the World Series, Inez was, you know, helped them win. Uh, she wore number 11. Is there a number there? Uh, she had an interesting nickname, too, that not only Lefty, but when she got to Grand Rapids, they also called her the Big Hook. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's because she could snag any ball that came her way. She played first base, right? And so she could just snag anything that came her way. And so they called her the Big Hook. Um, she was known for being a good fielder playing first base, 
Uh, she batted left. See her there. She threw left. There, she became a fan favorite. In fact, um, there she is signing an autograph, I think. Uh, but one of the things, when, when we were in Michigan, we went to church in Michigan in Grand Rapids, and one of the old guys there, uh, when he heard that we were coming out here, and I think Ross had told them about Inez and her baseball days, and he's like, oh, yeah, I remember Lefty Voice, because he had grown up watching them as a kid, you know, watching them play ball. And so she was definitely a fan favorite, evidently. Um, Okay, I got to throw this in for you. Well, I'll throw it in for Inez. Her statistics, okay? So her stats, there's her baseball card. I put it on the back of your program, okay? So for all you baseball fans, you will know, yeah, right over on the table, there's some programs there. You'll see what she did. Uh, she played in 894 games, uh, 3,047 at bats. She scored uh, 363 runs, 781 hits. 81 doubles, 26 triples, 28 home runs, 422 RBIs, uh, let's see, 168 stolen bases, 480 walks, 144 strikeouts. She hardly ever struck out. There was one year, okay, if you know anything about baseball, 1949, she only struck out nine times with 374 at-bats. That's incredible. That's crazy. I would strike out nine times in two games, okay? <laughs> but um, then her batting average was, uh, her career average was 256. Um, on the all-time list, okay, of the Women's Baseball League, she, for games played, she was 10th. For at-bats, she was 9th. Okay, so because the, the league only lasted, was like 11, 12 years, so she was played for eight of the years. Um, Home run list, she ranked ninth. Uh, for doubles, she ranked seventh. For walks, she ranked sixth. For total bases, she ranked fifth. For hits, she was fourth. And for RBI, she was second in the league. And uh, so she was known for that, hitting while people were on base. So anyway, after her baseball time was done, uh, she moved to California. There's a big blank space there for me that I couldn't find any information about her, so I'm not sure all that happened. Uh, but she moved to California sometime after the baseball years. I know she worked in accounting and banking and um, over the years. And so let's talk about church stuff now. That's where I can get a little bit more information now. So um, I can see her right over here. <laughs> yep. So that was sometime in the 70s, uh, either late 60s or early 70s. I, I couldn't find a date for that picture, but it was sometime right in, around that period. And uh, she was saved as a young girl at some point. She was baptized at the age of 14. I actually found her, there's a little card back in those days that if you were going to be a member of the church, you signed this, this card and it had the date of your baptism, and, and we still had that. So I found it. I was like, wow. So she was baptized in 1938 when she was 14 and probably back somewhere in Iowa. And then um, she joined the church in 1964. Here's from an old church directory. You can see her there. Um, on the card, it, 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 it asked for verses that you would base your assurance of salvation on. And so she put Acts 2.21 and John 3.16. So we'll look at those a little bit later. In uh, 1977, here's another picture of her in the directory. 1977, she was elected as treasurer to the church, and she served in that capacity for over 20 years. I don't know exactly how long, but it was over 20 years. Um, let's see here. She was instrumental in bringing us to Santa Monica. And I know when uh, Ross was, you know, in contact with the church here, it was mostly with Inez that he was in contact with. And so she was instr instrumental in bringing us all out here. Here's a, this is Inez now from my time that I can remember. There she is there. This, uh, those pictures there, um, let me see. Yeah, these ones here, yeah, the date is 1999. And uh, that, that was my ordination service. 
And we had a meal afterwards, and so I can remember from that. Um, this was a Father's Day luncheon that we had some years ago, and uh, she always enjoyed being at church. Uh, she was always happy to be here. You can see her in the background there. And there she is. She is again. Um, some of the different activities that, that she enjoyed. Um, she loved going for walks. I can tell you that because we were her neighbor, and we would often see her walk down the block, <laughs> go down the block, come back by the block. Um, so she loved going for walks. She loved playing golf. After she, her baseball days were over, she turned to golf, and she would play lots of golf. I know, I know she had some story with Tiger Woods. She was at something, and anyway. After the movie, she became, you know, had some more popularity. She, Inez has her own Wikipedia page, okay? So she became popular because of the baseball thing. Um, anyway, she traveled, liked to travel to baseball card shows, and uh, she would go to the shows and sign, sign her cards, and she had baseball cards, and, um, which, by the way, um, the card that I have on the back, the information, the totals of her stats is not accurate this misprint, so just, just so you know. But on the web, on a website, you could find her real stats. Um, let's see here. There, were, there was, you know, she, in her later years, she really missed being at church, um, especially when COVID hit and she couldn't come. And for years, she came. And, and I was telling Tammy, we're going to, I guess after tonight, we're going to have to remove the cushion there that says, please leave on the pew for Inez, because <laughs> that was the cushion where she always sat. And um, so she loved being in church, and she really missed being here. And uh, we'd go and see her sometimes, and, and she always wanted to be here. Um, let's see here. She also played the trumpet, and uh, didn't play it a lot in her, in her later years, but she did play the trumpet. and. Um, she said, told me, and probably anyone else who would listen, that she wanted to live to be 100 years in three days. And that's because Marguerite lived to be 100 years in two days, and she wanted to beat her. Always a competitor, right? And um, didn't quite make it. Uh, she just missed her 98th birthday, but came pretty close. I'll give her that. Um, the last couple weeks, uh, they moved her out of her house and moved her to a nursing home facility, and she was only, it wasn't there long before she passed away. And uh, from what they say, she passed away very peacefully, just was sitting in the activities room and slumped over and was gone. And, um, you know, the Lord really blessed her in that, too. So I want to give you some time now to, if there's any story personal tribute, something you remember Inez for and you would like to tell us about, um, I'd love to hear it too. So anybody want to start? Tammy, do you want to start it off with a uh, thing from Karen? Yeah. COVID time, her caregivers get a little bit rattled up. But if I went to see her, there was a man. But 
But if I went to see her, she would tell me that he had passed by today. She would watch. She knew everything we did. One of her, I think, I think it was Venus, her caregiver, used to say that any guy that walked by should say, there goes a the pastor. <laughs> and so she'd always be waiting for me to walk home for lunch, you know, and then, yeah. Yep. Somebody else. Memory of Inez. Okay, Zena. Go ahead. Well, I guess my parents stacked up. <laughs> yep. Thank you. 
Thanks. Anybody else? Yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I know she. She had a baseball with all their autographs on it, the actors' autographs and stuff. So yeah, I know she had met them and yeah. Somebody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, that's good. You, you can tell this picture here, Kurt Gibson hitting home run World Series, right? That's, that, that was in her kitchen. So, yeah, she was a Dodger fan. Yep. I found that out. It got, it got a little bit touchy when the Red Sox were playing the Dodgers in the World Series. It was a little touchy around here. So, <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, Philip's going to come up and do some special music for us. It is not death to die 
to leave this weary road and join the saints who dwell on high who found their home with God it is not death to close the eyes long dimmed by tears and wake in joy before your throne, delivered from our fears. O oh, Jesus, conquering the grave, your precious blood has power to save those who trust in you will in your mercy find that it is not death to die it is not death to flee aside this earthly dust and rise with strong and noble wing to live among the just it is not death to hear the key unlock the door that sets us free from mortal years to praise you evermore. O oh, Jesus, conquering the grave, your precious blood has power to save those who trust in you will in your mercy find that it is not death to die that it is not death to time. Well, I want to share a little bit with you from the Bible because Inez. Um, I can't remember when it was, but some years back, asked me to do her funeral. And um, she specifically wanted me to talk about the gospel. And um, so I was trying to think of a specific scripture that would fit with Inez's life and with her testimony. And uh, she was a very accomplished woman. And um, she had an amazing baseball career. As I said, she has her own Wikipedia page. I mean, that means something, right? Uh, she was faithful in church for years. Uh, she helped the church remain open when there was no pastor and no men to do it. You know, and she was largely, again, as I said, responsible for bringing us out here to Santa Monica. So, you know, she was an amazing, very accomplished woman. She was also very blunt. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't hold back anything she was going to say if she thought she should say it. And, um, and, and I think most accomplished people can be that way. Uh, she was com very competitive. She was opinionated. You know, she was outspoken. She wasn't afraid to share her opinions. She wasn't what you would call a woman who was soft. And in some ways, she could be a little bit gruff sometimes. And, um, but Inez was blessed by God, very much so. And so, especially in her later years, you see God's blessings on her life. And um, 
just her giving her caregivers who, I mean, you, you, can, you can have somebody who gets caregivers and you never know what you're gonna get. But she had some really nice ladies that were helping her for years, bring her to church, and um, that was just a blessing for her. I mean, she didn't, she never had to go into a nursing home until like the last two weeks of her life. I mean, it was blessing by God. Um, and over the years, I, we knew her for about 27 years, right? And, and I could see, as her pastor, I could see over the years, God softened her a lot. He really did. So much so that, you know, in her later years, you would say, wow, she's sweet. <laughs> you know, she's a sweet lady. She really is. And, um, and you could see what God had done in her life. And um, like we said, she would always see me walking by. And so I'd go up and if she was out, I'd go up and see her and, and would talk for maybe like two or three minutes. And then she'd say, okay, you can go now. <laughs> and that was, that was her. <laughs> just, just, a, just a blunt, you know. And, um, but she was blessed by God and she knew it. And so as I was thinking about that, and also she would have been the first to tell you she didn't deserve it. And so the scripture I thought of is um, in Genesis chapter 47. And this is when Jacob came to Egypt, met Joseph, his son, and Joseph brought Jacob before Pharaoh to meet Pharaoh. And here is Jacob meeting the most powerful man in the world, Pharaoh. And what would he say to Pharaoh? And so we find it in Genesis 47, starting at verse 7. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh, and went out from before Pharaoh. And the reason why I look at these verses is because Jacob was blessed by God and he knew it, and he knew he didn't deserve it. The same way. So let me, let me just show you from, from this how Jacob knew he was blessed by God and how God had blessed him over the years, and especially in these last moments. First thing we see that he, he was with Joseph again. Now, if you know the story, uh, years before, Jacob thought that he had lost Joseph for good. He thought that Joseph had died. Um, Joseph's brothers said that he had died, that an animal had killed him. And Jacob thought he'd never see his son again. And then when Jacob heard that Joseph was alive again, you know, the, the joy that there must have been many years later. And then in back, back in chapter 46, starting at verse 1, we find that he understood this was all from God. This is God's blessing. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. He came and as he was on his way uh, to go to Egypt, he stops and makes sacrifices to God along the way because he knew that God had blessed him. He was going to see his son Joseph again. In verse 2, And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And God just assured him along the way and said, yeah, go down to Egypt. You'll see Joseph again. And I'll bring you back out again. And so he got to reunite with Joseph. And over the years, as he could have thought back, he knew that it had been 33 years between the time that 
he thought Joseph had died, and now the time that he was reunited with him again. And between that time, you know, you look at Jacob's life, and one of the things about Jacob is he didn't have a picture-perfect life by any means. There was a lot of issues in his life, and yet we still see God blessing him again and again. Uh, part of the whole reason why Joseph was in Egypt was because Jacob favored him. Because Jacob favored Rachel, his mother. And then Jacob favored uh, Joseph over his brothers. And yet God still let him live to see Joseph again. We see that, that Jacob was a humble man. Back in uh, Genesis 47, verse 8, Pharaoh says to Jacob, How old art thou? It's like, I think it's like this. How old are you? Because when he saw Jacob, he says, this man is an old man. Because I think the family, the patriarchal family, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they lived longer than the other people around them did. I mean, people were living longer in those days, but I think, especially among the patriarchs, they were living longer than other people were. I don't think people in Egypt were living quite that many years. And Pharaoh kind of is surprised. How old is this man? And so Jacob tells him. And Jacob says, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Because I'm 130 years old. He beat out Inez by a few years. So I'm 130 years old. But then he describes the years of his life in two ways. They're few. Say, few? How can you say 130 years are few? Well, because Abraham <laughs> lived to be 175, and Isaac, his father, lived to be 180. So, yeah, Jacob's years were few compared to them. But he said few, and then he calls them evil. Because Jacob had not always been the best man. Jacob had lived a hard life in a lot of ways. Jacob was kind of a schemer. He had out-schemed Esau from his birthright. Then he out-schemed Esau from the blessing. Then he was out-schemed by his uncle Laban. And then he... In all of that, he took multiple wives and had a dysfunctional family and, and used superstition to try to grow his flocks and wrestled with God and came away limping for the rest of his life. Two of his sons, Simeon and Levi, slaughtered a whole city of men. His favorite wife, Rachel, which to say that is a problem in and of itself, right? But his favorite wife, Rachel, had died in childbirth. And then he had been deceived by his sons about Joseph. His life had been hard. And yet God had used the hard things in his life to wear down the rough edges in Joseph or Jacob. And by the end, he's, he's a humble man. He's looking back over his life and he said, you know what? I don't deserve the blessings of God. That's basically what he's saying to Pharaoh. But then also in this message he gives to Pharaoh, he had eternal hope. And we can see that in this, because in, in verse 9 he says to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. And as he's talking to Pharaoh, he refers to his life as a pilgrimage. I'm just sojourning here. This life is not the end. My life is nothing but a pilgrimage. I, my life is not the destination. It's the road to the destination. And Hebrews, in Hebrews 11, says, tells us that those who say such things declare plainly that they're seeking a country that's not an earthly one, but a heavenly one. And so the patriarchs, they talked like that. Because Jacob really believed that he was going to be with the Lord one day. And that when he died, as, as the, is so often said in Genesis, he was gathered to his fathers, or gathered to his people. He knew he'd see Isaac again. He knew he'd see Abraham again. He knew he'd see his, his mother again, and his grandmother again, and those before them. 
He knew that. Because he had eternal hope. And so in this, this message that he gives to Pharaoh, I think in Jacob's mind, he says, I'm going to talk about my life as I know it is. And I'm going to tell him that I'm just on a pilgrimage here. He knew where he was going. He didn't deserve to be saved, but he knew he was going to heaven. And then we see also that he offered God's blessing. And this is the, the, the most interesting thing about this passage, I think, in verse 7. And Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world at the time. And he goes in before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So wait a second, shouldn't Pharaoh be blessing you? He's the powerful one. And Jacob is coming in as the one who's going to bless Pharaoh. Almost as if Jacob is, I feel sorry for you, Pharaoh. You're the most powerful man in the world, but you don't know my God. You need the blessing of God on you. And then we see at the end, in verse 10, after Jacob says what he does about the years of his life, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. So he blessed him again. Pharaoh, you need the blessing of God. I've experienced the blessing of God in my years. And Pharaoh, that's what you need. If God could bless Jacob, Jacob knew God could bless anybody. He could bless a Pharaoh too. And so he blessed Pharaoh. Jacob wasn't good enough to earn God's blessing, and he knew that. He didn't deserve the blessing of God. Like Abraham, he simply believed God, and God counted it to him for righteousness. And this is the gospel part that I promised Inez I would say. Consider these facts of the gospel. That God is gracious by nature. God loves to bless people. But God is also just by nature. And the problem is that people have sinned against God. We've lived rebellious lives against God. And so God in his justice must punish sin and must punish those who commit the sin, the sinners. But because God is gracious and he loves to bless even people like sinners, he has a plan in which to redeem sinners. And that's what Jesus is all about. That Jesus came into the world to take our sin upon himself. Jesus came into the world to take Jacob's sin, to take Inez's sin upon himself, and died on the cross for that sin, not just being crucified on a cross as punishment, but receiving the punishment of God the Father on sin. So that we could be saved. And sinners need to acknowledge their sin before God in repentance and trust Christ for their salvation. And when they do, they'll be blessed of God. And their life, their whole life long, will be blessed of God. Not because they've somehow earned God's blessing, but because Jesus earned God's blessing for them and they've received it. And that's the gospel that Inez believed. And she was blessed by God and she knew it. I've got to show you this. I know you're not going to be able to read this. this I, I found this online. It's a fan letter. Okay? So evidently, a fan had uh, contacted Inez in some way and she had a form letter that she would send out to fans. Okay? And... Let me read it for you. I got it written down here. So, dear baseball fan, thank you so much for your kind remembrance of me. I am now in my early, well, here it says late 80s, but then she crossed it out and put it early 90s. Okay, so, so, I am now in my early 90s, and the excitement of baseball still lives in my heart. I am sorry that many memories have faded. 
I have loved playing, watching, or listening to baseball all my life. I can tell you that I went to try out for the AAGPBL, that's the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, okay, in Los Angeles while I was still in the Navy. I made it through the tryouts and was told that I could report for spring training in Mississippi, land of the bed bugs. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Lucky for me, my Navy time was complete. In the spring of 1946, I did begin my spring training and the rest is baseball history. The years that I spent getting, in quotes, dirt in my skirt, okay, <laughs> that was <laughs> funny, are still the happiest years in my now long life. And then here's how she ended it. May God bless your life as he has mine. She ended it like Jacob did. She blessed this fan and acknowledged that God had blessed her life. And she knew she didn't deserve it, but she was blessed by God, and she did know that. And the question is, you know, have you received God's blessings through Christ? We, uh, in our, we had our Bible Land Adventure a couple of weeks ago. We, the, the theme verse was uh, that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. If we've trusted Christ as our Savior, we've got the blessings of God. God will bless our lives, us for the rest of our lives. Let me end it with uh, the two verses that Inez had put on her membership card when she was becoming a member of the church. The first one is Acts 2.21. She said, these are the verses that, that she based the assurance of her salvation. How did she know that she was saved and her sins had been forgiven? and that she was going to heaven. First one, Acts 2.21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there was a time in her life where she called on the name of the Lord. And he saved her. And then the other verse, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Inez believed in Christ, and she had everlasting life. And she knew that. Let's go ahead and uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you uh, for these things that we've been talking about tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony of Jacob. We thank you for the testimony of Inez. Father, we thank you that you bless those who don't deserve it. We thank you, Lord, that you will, you will take those of us who, who have not had easy lives in some cases, and you will bless us in ways that we don't deserve and can't imagine. And then in heaven, will bless us for all eternity in ways we don't deserve and can't imagine. All because of your grace. We thank you that you are a gracious God who loves sinners enough to take your just punishment for their sin on yourself. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, close with... Uh, the song number 256, It Is Well With My Soul. And I think sometimes when we would used to have favorite songs, Inez would often call that one out if I can remember, remember right. So, It Is Well With My Soul. <clears throat> like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot 
Thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the God bless you all. Good night.